Today we're talking about this save file dialog again. We talked about it in the previous tutorial too. But whereas in the previous tutorial we talked about creating a save file dialog via the IDE, this time we're going to discuss how to create it with a code approach. And using a code approach you have to initially instantiate the save file dialog as an object then you need to set the filter property of that object. If you want to restrict the types of files you can save as, you might not want to restrict it, so you just leave that unset if you don't. And then after you return from the uh, call to the save file dialog, you need to check the OK return result to see if uh, an OK button was pressed rather than cancel and indicating that the user did specify a save file name. <coughs> and finally, you need to use the file name property to get the specified name and location of the save file. So I'll just use the same form we created in the previous tutorial, which has one button that says save file. If I double click on this button, we'll see the code we wrote when we're using the IDE approach and I'll just comment that out. Now we need to instantiate a save file dialog object. So, uh, weirdly, the first thing I get when I type an S is save file dialog. I'm going to name this uh, SFD for save file dialog. And this is just a standard instantiation process, turning a class into an object. Then we can specify a filter if we want to restrict uh, what uh, file names it can be saved under. And say text file. And then a bar, oops, which is uh, right above the back arrow key, and then specify how that's defined. So it'd be txt, and we could have another bar and have another file type, uh, jpeg. etc. Have as many as you want. And then in order to invoke the dialog we just say uh, sfd dot uh, show dialog. But we want to also check the return value from the show dialog so we'll put an if around this. do equals and it immediately pops up a fairly long qualifying string so I just click a dot to get that qualifying string and then select OK define a string for the name and get the file name. And then we can just copy this code we used previously to write something to that file. And then close the if body. That'll probably be pretty much it, really. If we save this and then run it and do a save file, once again the save file dialog pops up. 
this time we have two possible things we can save it under either text or JPEG and if I go to uh, I guess the same directory test data it's still it's still uh, uh, located there so I don't need to type anything in I could go somewhere else you know but might as well leave it there and give it a name of uh, say test 2 and then save it close this out now if we go to this directory in Explorer we have see we have the first one we created in the last tutorial and the one we just correct created if we double click on that see we have indeed written to the file we specified the string well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot and don't forget to subscribe